do, do, do. Hey, bro, have you seen my cortisone body pillow anywhere? Oh my god! <laughs> I got gr gr grilled mochi, big mom, skeleton, raisin, raisin Oh, Jiminy raisin. Cricket's Christmas. He's in a high pole! Somebody call a doctor for God's sake! Oh, wait, wait a second, I, oh, I'm a doctor! Yeah, right, oh, that so very rarely ever comes up. Okay, law teching, it's time to save a life. Okay, buddy, don't you worry. All you gotta do is just lay back and obey the law. Hey kids, how you doing? Techie 101 here, and welcome to One Piece Chapter Inter 94 Review, titled 1205 Midnight AM Final Day. Begin now. <laughs> okay. Um, this chapter actually does kind of something interesting, something different. We get like various time stamps throughout the chapter indicating the flow of time. Uh, of course, 1 a.m. is when the designated meeting time at Cacao Island. That's when the Straw Hats are supposed to meet up with Luffy. They're heading there now. Kind of reminds me of an episode of 24, honestly. Does anyone remember that show, 24, with Kiefer Sutherland? You know, Jack Bauer. You, know, you give me the bomb! You know, that kind of thing where they like periodically show a time stamp throughout the episode. Yeah, that was a good show. But that's basically what we have this week. Uh, Ending at 12.05 a.m., uh, indicating there is less than one hour until the meeting between uh, Luffy and the Straw Hats. So basically, Luffy has less than an hour by the end of this chapter to wrap up his fight with Katakuri. And considering that, you might think, oh, that's a lot of time to work with. You got 55 minutes until the end of your fight. But keep in mind, Katakuri and Luffy have been brawling for close to half a day now. I think they started their fight around 1 or 2 p.m. It is now 12.05 a.m. by the end of this chapter. So we're talking almost, you know, 12 hours of just constant brawling. Rolling. But we're closing it out soon, is basically, I think, what this chapter is kind of indicating, moving on to the final phase of the battle. So, the cover page this week is one more Tone Tata. I thought last week was going to be the last one. I was looking for some Hyrugene giant action this week. Unfortunately, we don't get that, but I will, I'm pretty sure this is the last chapter of a little Leo's epic. Uh, we have the Tone Tata pirate crew and their new ship, the Uso Lando, being the escorts for Reverie. So, that's kind of funny, because I'm imagining, you know, King Riku is going to get into his giant ship, you know, with the, representing the Dressrosa Kingdom. Viola's going to be there. Rebecca's going to be on the ship as uh, Viola's lady-in-waiting, which I looked it up. It doesn't sound as awesome as it, as, as it sounds. It's not even close to being as erotic, unfortunately. But yeah, Rebecca's going to be the lady-in-waiting, and Viola's, of course, the princess. King Riku's, of course, the king. And I'm sure Tank's going to be there, too, you know, and they're, they're like security and everything. But the Tontadas are going to be the escort, which that's going to be hilarious. That's going to be hilarious watching like here's uh here's cobra nefertari showing up at uh the uh reverie and then it's like all the like hina's crew and the marines are all surrounding it and then here comes the dress rosa ship which is this little dinky little dingy bobbin in the water next to it like huh you know what but hey 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 like i said last time when pirates try to attack that damn boat they're gonna have way more than they bargain for they're gonna be their entire ship's gonna be overrun by a bunch of tone tatas they're gonna be th knocked off the side before they even know what happened to them all right so you don't knock the tone tatas but anyway getting into the actual chapter we actually have a flashback that takes up like like one third of this where we focus on rayleigh training with luffy so last week when i was like can we please get some more rayleigh into this one piece i guess oda heeded my call because we got some Rayleigh in this. Um, so basically Luffy is of course being trained in the art of observation hockey and it's important to notice. I don't know if Oda is going to do a thing where he shows you know this is Luffy's struggles with 
learning uh, Aramant, and here's Luffy's struggle with learning Conquerors, because we seem to be focusing a lot on observation. Now, of course, this makes sense, because the fight with Katakuri is very observation hockey-centric, so it's of course makes sense we would look at his training in observation, but I don't know if this is Oda telling us that observation hockey was the thing that Luffy had, like, the hardest time to master out of the three types. He was already predisposed for Conqueror's hockey, um, and Armament, he seems to be, hey, look, he seems to be busting out Armament hockey fairly well in this fight with Katakuri. It seems like his time frame with Gear 4th is increasing, it's getting longer and longer, so uh, from the way I'm looking at it, it seems observation is the one that Luffy, like, struggled with the most. Um, and so the way that Rayleigh is training him, of course he has the blindfold, he's hitting him with a stick, but he's mentioning that you're not going to be allowed to eat unless you actually concentrate and you manage to evade my attacks. Um, do you think the enemy will care if you're hungry? <laughs> well, I I guess it would be the opponent in that in that respect. I mean, if Luffy is fighting against somebody, like if he was fighting against Smoker, you know, Smoker at the beginning of the story just wanted to bring Straw Hat in, but now it's sort of like a rivalry between the two. So, you know, I can imagine like if Smoker, you know, found Luffy on the ground starving to death, I don't think Smoker would just be like, all right, well, I'm bringing you in, Straw Hat, and then just chains him up and carries him away. I don't think Smoker would be happy with that ending. So Smoker would be like, all right, Fucking Tashigi, bring him some food. If I'm gonna kick his ass, I want him to be freaking conscious while I'm doing it. You know, like, so, I guess it would depend on the enemy in that circumstance. But anyway, Rayleigh made a very, very faulty error here, okay? He made, like, an arrow 404, all right? He's trying to train Luffy while there's dinner simmering on the fire just, like, ten yards away. And Luffy's blindfolded, of course, he can't see it, but Luffy can sense meat. Like, literally, like, he, he can sense meat back on Amazon Lily that's being cooked when he's on Ruskina, all right? So he's sitting there, and he's just like... Hmm, Mmm, what's that delicious smell? And then Rayleigh's like, oh, that's just my dinner, don't worry about it. Okay, those words, food and don't worry about it, those cannot exist in the same sentence in Luffy's mind, all right? Just not gonna click. So Luffy, of course, you know, sends out a gummo go no pistol. Uh, I guess he was trying to deflect Lu uh, Rayleigh's attack, but instead he just aimed it for the food, knocked over the pot, and then Rayleigh's expression is what you could figure, like, damn, that was my dinner! And then he hockeys up his freaking stick and then smacks Luffy upside the head with it. Ah yes, the mighty hockey stick. Second only to Mihawk's mighty Yoru as the strongest weapon in all of One Piece. The legacy of the hockey stick will be carried on until the next millennia, Age of the Pirates. You know, it'll be like the next journey after Luffy all finishes up. He's like, well, you know, we gotta go find that hockey stick, man. That was the most powerful weapon ever used. But anyway, yeah, Luffy gets knocked up to the side, and um, he states, Wow, somehow I can sense anger. And um, Rayleigh says, Yes, that's hockey as well. He says, Look, it's not just about, you know, sensing an attack. It's about sensing the intent behind an attack, okay? So, for instance, if you're, like, sitting out in the middle of Ruskina, and a giant tiger comes up behind you and tries to attack you, the tiger is probably not feeling any sort of intent of anger or anything. The tiger just wants food. And I think that's a critical factor here. The stronger an emotion is, the stronger the intent is, I guess I should say, is the easier you'll be able to sense it using observation. And it's very important to discern between different types of intent. Here's something attacking me purely for food. Here's something attacking me, you know, he's like just like as a sparring match, not actually trying to hurt me. And then here's someone attacking me with true rage. He's really trying to kill me. Very important that you make those distinctions with observation hockey. And so in this case, obviously, Rayleigh attacked him with anger because, you know, he, Luffy destroyed his dinner, so he proceeds to just pound Luffy into the ground like, here, try to dodge this! I sense anger! I sense so much anger! What's going on here? So we cut to later that night. It seems like uh, the blindfold thing is on Luffy. I guess Rayleigh gave him the uh, the task of wearing this blindfold 24-7. He's not allowed to take it off because even when he's lying on the ground, defeated and just trying to sleep, uh, he still has the blindfold on. We see some animals from the forest come out. Not the giant animals earlier, like the giant... Uh, gorilla or the lion, but just like a normal sized wolf and a fox that are trying to bring Luffy food. Now remember, Luffy basically worked his way up the food chain on this island, where after two years he was basically the boss of all of the animals on Ruskina, even the really big ones. Um, so I'm assuming he started a small, you know, started making the animals subservient to him, because you see the tiger and the fox have bandages on their heads, like Luffy beat the crap out of them, and then that's why they're obeying him now. Um, but I'm stir at, at this point in his training, the larger animals are still way too much for him, but as for like the fox and the, and the tiger, you know, they're actually helping him out, like trying to bring him some food. And Luffy's lying there and he 
he's just like, is that you guys? No, I don't want any food. Rayleigh said I'm not allowed to eat until I master this, so he basically goes to bed hungry. And that's when you start realizing, <laughs> did, did you notice this? The way Rayleigh is trying to teach Luffy about hockey is depriving him of food. The way Mihawk was teaching Zoro about hockey was depriving him of alcohol, and uh, we haven't really seen a lot of training with Sanji and, and Ivankov on the Kamabaka Kingdom, but obviously it's the Kamabaka Kingdom. He was deprived of women so that that's something funny you got to deprive them of their greatest desire in order for them to break through those walls you know what i mean so we cut to i guess the next day it's snowing now but keep in mind the weather on ruse skynet changes literally every single week so it could be summer one week and then the very next day it can immediately turn to winter um so you have rayleigh there sipping some booze and he's just like you know it seems that the part of observation that you're best at is you're, you're good at sensing the personalities of other living creatures um which, of course, Luffy has shown to do, like, throughout the story, but that's not all there is to it. Observation has many different facets, uh, and he even goes on to say that eventually, uh, when you get really good at it, the true masters of observation in the world will even be able to get a glimpse of the future, and, of course, he's referring to characters like Katakuri. Um, I'm assuming Rayleigh could probably do that, too. Rayleigh's like a hockey master. Now, I think when Rayleigh specifies, you know, you, you seem to be very good at sensing the feelings of living things, I think that also might tie back to Luffy's inherent ability to hear the voices of all things. You know, so he can kind of understand them on a, on a greater level, even though he doesn't really understand that power so much himself. Now, remember, Roger had that power too. Rayleigh was Roger's right-hand man, but that doesn't mean Rayleigh knew a lot about it. It wasn't an ability that Rayleigh had. So maybe Rayleigh might bring up to Luffy, like, yeah, this was the same ability that Roger had, had the ability to hear the voices, um, but I can't really help you with that because it's not an ability I have. I have no idea how it functions. Roger probably didn't even really know how it worked. It's just something he was probably born with. He could just hear the voices of every living thing. Um, but uh, that's probably why Luffy has that, it, you know, that, that connection with the animals on the island. He's working his way up the food chain and everything like that. Uh, but there's more to observation than that, just that. There's different facets to it. There's being able to sense the intentions of living things like empathy, like, I sense your feelings happy or joy right now and then there's actually sensing attacks and like dodging them and then there's doing what Katakuri's doing actually sensing the future so there's many different aspects of this um, and he states that if you have this ability though if you're able to sense feelings you'll definitely be able to get the grasp of observation hockey sooner or later and he also brings up Rayleigh he says what happens if you ever meet somebody that has the ability to see into the future because I can guarantee you right now the two-year training that I'm gonna give you that's not even gonna be close enough to master hockey you're not, you're just, I'm just going to give you the basics, okay? And remember, Luffy was a quick learner. He learned the basics after about a year and a half, and then Rayleigh left. Um, but that doesn't mean just because, uh, you know, Luffy was really quick with the basics that he's going to be able to master all three forms of hockey in two years. It just wasn't going to happen. So Rayleigh says, like, in two years, if you meet somebody right out of the gate that has the ability to sense the future, what are you going to do? And Luffy's just like, hmm. Well, I guess it depends on their personality. And Rayleigh has a moment where he's like, personality? Damn, I didn't even think of that. I didn't even consider that option. Well, all right. And so they continue their training, and Rayleigh begins to beat the crap out of him. But uh, it's interesting that, that that's how Luffy's always been. You know, he mentions, you know, it, I guess it really depends on if the person's, you know, honorable, if they're going to, like, help me out in the fight, or if they're just going to steamroll me, or if they're... You know, it really all depends on the individual, and that's an option Rayleigh never even considered. And, of course, the thing with Kata Curry right now, I mean, Kata Curry is trying to beat down Luffy. He is fighting him with all he's got. Um, but at the same time, he has valor. He has honor as a warrior, and he's going to, you know, he, he kind of like respects Luffy on that level from what we learned last chapter. Uh, a lot about Katakuri's character development last chapter, more about Luffy's character uh, being evolved here and learning more about how he uh, uh, learned observation hockey from Le uh, Rayleigh in this chapter. So uh, keep that in mind there, a nice little parallel between the two. So we cut back to the present storyline where Luffy's all banged up, one of his eyes is all swollen, he's sitting there, but he's very calm, and he's just like, hmm, and he's sensing Katakuri's moves, and this is kind of the vision of what Luffy senses, you know, just a silhouette of Katakuri and the various mochi attacks heading at him, and Luffy manages to dodge a few. However, Katakuri still manages to get a hit on him right on his face, and he blocks another shot with his arm, and his arm begins to swell. Even though he has armament, Katakuri's armament is just tougher. He gets knocked back, and there's this scene here where Luffy is just like a wild animal. He's just like, like, they've been, keep in mind, they've been fighting for a long time. At this point, Luffy is probably just at his wits end. He's just like, like I'm gonna tank this! I'm gonna tank it! Damn it! Die, you mochi pizza! 
<laughs> so, I mean, it's like a wild animal. It really is. Um, and then Katakuri busts out a new move. <sighs> Katakuri has the ability to control heat now. That You explain to me what this is. You know, grilled mochi. Heats up the freaking mochi on his arm. Then it blows off and then punches Luffy like Katakuri has a damn rocket punch now. Which I admit is awesome on at least... Three, four, five, five different levels, but still, keep in mind, he can do that. He just, I can just heat up my body whenever I want. And then it just blows up and it sends his arm flying with his block mochi and it punches Luffy square in his freaking jaw. Um, and then knocks him back and then Katakuri just regrows his arm. Now, from what I've gathered so far, you know, Katakuri's body is, you know, it, it's, it's mochi, the same way that Luffy's body is rubber. However, uh, and, and so if he wasn't an Awaken user, the mochi arm probably wouldn't have regenerated. But keep in mind, he is Awaken and he can turn the surrounding area into mochi. So, you know, he could, you know, sever a body part of his own free will, he could probably just use the mochi from the surrounding area to make a new arm. So that's probably the best idea I got with that. I mean, I, I've already discussed Katakuri's mochi ability on length. Here, here's a video, go watch that. Maybe it'll make more sense to you, maybe it won't. I oh, don't freaking know, man. But anyway, he summons a few more peerless donuts. Luffy comes at him, man, just to hit him square in the face. So he's he's getting shots out on Carter Curry. He, it's 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 more more even now, definitely than it used to be. Um, you know, Luffy doesn't even need to be in gear fourth at this point, but he's still managing to slam into Carter Curry, and he's just not going down. So, uh, now it is 10.10 p.m. We cut over to Beige's side, where they're heading to Lacour Island, which was their original destination. However, Chiffon is looking at the maps, and we get a little view of Totland here. We see a few more islands, like we see Candy and Jelly Island. Um, there's a few that have, like, Japanese names that I have no idea, like Millens Island and Roku Mitsu Island. There's a Fruits Island. There's an Ice Island. That'd be very cold to live on the Ice Island. I kind of want to see what Ice Island looks like. Probably a bunch of igloos and stuff all over the place. Frozen banquet dinners. I don't know. But um, anyway, uh, Chiffon mentions, hey, you know, we should really change course. Instead of heading to Lakor Island, we should head to Puffs Island, which is a little bit further away. And Beige and the crew is like, why should we do that? And he's like, well, if we don't head to a further away island, if we just go to Lakor Island, drop the cake off there, and Big Mom eats the cake on Lakor Island, what if she recovers all of her senses? What if she gets back to full power, and she knows she regains her senses, and she immediately wants to head after the Straw Hats? Cacao Island is not that far from Lakor Island. She would be, like, there in a few seconds, so we should really go a little bit further. Of course, Beijing's reaction to this are like, are you out of your mind? You know, we're, we've, haven't we done enough for them already? Haven't we already saved them enough? Why, why are we going to do this again? Of course, Chiffon has a bond with, uh, you know, Nami and everything like that because of the whole Lola thing. Of course, Chiffon wants to help out the crew, and Beijing's going to listen to his wife because he loves his wife very much, so I think there's no, no real issue there. They might complain about it a little, but they're probably eventually, yeah, let, okay, let's go to Puff's Island. Let's follow Chiffon's plan. That's how it works. So, we now we cut over to Big Mom, and she ain't looking so hot. She ain't looking so hot. Actually, it's starting to look like uh, her and that whole Brooke and Big Mom fanfic that I'm uh, currently writing for some reason that you don't need to know about might actually have a shot at going down because she is very emaciated. Um, you know, her body's getting very lo elongated there, her tongue sticking out. You know, there was a moment... I think it was a very brief moment, but there was a moment, nonetheless, that I remember when Big Mom began to lose weight, like slowly but surely lose weight. I remember reading a few comments that are sitting there like, hmm, maybe Big Mom's going to lose like a bunch of weight and she's going to go back to being like really hot or something. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know about you. If you find this attractive to each their own, I guess. Anyway, Luffy gets punched in the face by Katakuri again. Um, so there's that. I also like the little design there because Katakuri has his tattoos on his arm. And when he turns it into block mochi, the tattoo is still there. I like that. You know, he gets slammed in the face. Then we cut back over to the Thousand Sunny. This is like, are these like transitions? Like every time Oda wants to do a transition, we just cut back to Luffy getting punched in the face by a mochi fist and like all right that's a transition moving on Right, so over on the Thousand Sunny, you of course have Nami, Brooke, Chopper, Jinbei. They're all uh, dodging attacks from Smoothie's ship. You know, uh, basically Nami's watching out for the attacks coming, and then she gives directions to Jinbei. Jinbei, top level helmsman. He's like, evasive maneuver, Jinbei! Starboard side! Right away, Nami! Da -da 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 -da. And they dodge the attack with a- <laughs> HOLY SHIT! Okay, um, did, did Smoothie just use a freaking Getsuga Tensho? Like, 
What's going on here? Ichigo? Are you still with me, Ichigo? <gasps> yes, Matt. I'm always going to be with you. Forever. <gasps> okay. Sorry about that. Just got a little emotional there. Um, uh, anyway, uh, no, uh, Smoothie didn't exactly use a Getsuga Tensho, but something rather similar. I mean, it might as well be. We cut back over to her ship, and uh, she has gotten many, many times larger than, than life. And considering she's already a member of the Long Leg Tribe, she was already pretty tall. No, uh, Smoothie's Devil Fruit is the Juice Juice Fruit, I think it's just called. And of course, you know, she has the ability to juice living things. Like, she takes humans or animals and, you know, wrings them out, and the juice comes out and she drinks. Um, also, probably an animate objects too like smoothie probably could get blood from a rock you know just juice a rock um something else though i guess she could do is absorb fluids like 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 a sponge basically and she can absorb the liquid into herself to make herself appear larger and in fact i think she did this ability with somebody else but uh not herself but yeah she can do it herself and i guess using the excess liquid um, excess liquid she channels it into her sword sort of like a water blade and then she can shoot out a jet of that liquid Basically like a Getsuka Ten show or like one of uh, you know, like one of Zoro's flying slash techniques like Harbor Bird or something kind of along those lines So it's like a jet of uh, juice or water or whatever they're in the a uh, juice sea right now So of course uh, smoothie has like infinite ammo for this thing So she sends out these at uh, the thousand sunny although Jimbei is pretty good helmsman So he manages to dodge them and uh, the other sisters here You have uh, citron and cinnamon that are telling her hey, you know sister smoothie You need to you need to be careful because if you get too big the ship's gonna you know be damaged or it's gonna capsize you're too big and so we cut back over to the sunny and they're talking about how you know i wonder if luffy's won yet and then carrot comes out of the uh of her room she's re rested completely now keep in mind what was it now like around i want to say eight o'clock when carrot first did her sulong transformation so it's now 10 50 so that's about i want to say that's about three hours of rest after she uses this form so keep that in mind for later i'm not to say that she can't you know improve but if it's like three hours of a cool down period after she uses that move you know you might be careful and can she do it again she can i was like all right i did it I rested, can I do it again? Can I go into my Sulong form one more time? Might not be able to stay in it for as long. The cooldown period might be even longer for resting, or it might be dangerous to do it more than once in a night. Uh, but at any rate, Carrot's back in action. Then you have Chopper there who brings up, hey, hey, can Nekomamushi and Inurashi do that too? You know, you can just imagine that he's been sitting around for like the past two, three hours thinking about like all the questions he has for Carrot here. Um, hey, I have this thing called a rumble ball. You want to try one? Maybe that'll do something. <laughs> you know, that, I don't know, maybe, we'll see. Uh, what if happens if somebody that's not a devil fruit user eats the rumble ball would it just have no effect whatsoever it would be just like a jawbreaker or would it have like an actual effect i wonder um brooke's sitting there wondering you know if that woman is a giant no she's not a giant she's a long leg then you know she could just absorb liquids that's all that is too so we have another transition of luffy getting beat the f down by Kata Curry. this time he gets beaten down and then this you know uh, Kata Curry has the boots with the spurs on those spiked spurs that like cowboys do i guess well, what are spurs actually used for I, I, I would assume they're used to, like, um, you know, direct the horse in certain directions, but that, that seems kind of like a dick move. Hey, I have these these huge spiked discs on my boots. I'm going to jab into the size of my horse. Go that way, horse. That seems kind of mean. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Katakuri spikes are pretty sharp, and he's just, you know, basically grinding them right against Luffy's face. And, you know, that's, that's like, spike attacks are the techniques Luffy's weak against. You know, blunt attacks, you know, well, if they're hockey, it doesn't matter, but spiked attacks, he's very susceptible to so it's like kind curry's like got like a death fidget spinner like yeah It's 11.08 p.m. where we see uh, Pudding and Sanji riding on Rabian, and they're heading off, I guess, to Cacao Island. Um, you know, they left the Thousand Sunny. Of course, Sanji has a plan. We didn't really find out what the plan was last chapter, but he's like, I got no choice but to head to Cacao, so they're heading to Cacao. So, of course, Sanji has faith. You know, Luffy had faith in him and saved him, and now Sanji states, you know, I will definitely save my captain. So they head off over to Cacao. Uh, we get another transition of Luffy getting beaten down by Katakuri. Check, check. And now we cut over to Cacao Island proper. 
properly. It is 11.36 p.m. Uh, in the evening where we see just a bunch more of the Charlotte family arriving at the island. You know, Oven has had a lot of time to plan this. He probably got on the Den Den Mushy like, hey, emergency. Everybody that's not doing shit, get out of bed and get over to Cacao right now. Yes, even you, Brownie. You know, and, and so, because, like, um, they don't have to really worry about the other islands right now. Like, they don't have to worry about, like, Ice Island or Candy Island, because nothing's going on over there. So probably take all of the members of the Charlotte family that are not in the infirmary or anything and just get them over to Cacao, and we're going to have our last stand here. Now, this is kind of dangerous to me, because it seems like you're putting all your eggs in one basket, and if you manage to escape, everybody, like, if, the, if Luffy gets away... All of their forces are at Cacao, so it's not like you can spread out a net. Luffy managed, it's, it's one or done, it's all or nothing. If Luffy gets away, you guys are screwed. You understand that, Oven. But hey, you know, you're Oven, you're the fourth son. I'd like to think you're, you got a good head on your shoulders, even though your hairstyle isn't exactly great, but all right, let's just go with it. Um, so the members of the Big Mom family that are introduced here, we got the 32nd son, Charlotte Brownie. We got the 27th daughter, Charlotte uh, Jokande. And then we have... Uh, the deck tuplets, which uh, have actually been mentioned before, the deck tuplets, so 10 brothers and sisters um, that were all born at the same time to Big Mom, all right? And I think this was mentioned before in an SBS that the largest amount of kids that Big Mom gave birth to in one setting were the duck tuplets, uh, and there were 10 of them, of course, and they're all 18 years old. And so this ranges from the 30 to 36 sons and the 30 to 34 daughters. Now, so the 34th daughter of the deck tuplets is, in fact, 18 years old. Pudding is the 35th daughter, and then you had Flampe, who is the 36th daughter, who is uh, 15. So we have like 18 and 15. So honestly, Pudding is probably around 16, maybe 17 years old. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer to figuring out Pudding's age. We're almost there. Um, you know, we also have Charlotte Raisin, who is the 33rd son. We've actually already seen him in the anime. We actually even saw some of the deck tuplets in the anime as well during the meeting. Uh, Raisin was part of the Enraged Army, so he's a member, I guess, of the Long Leg Tribe. We also have somebody else right next to Raisin. We don't get a name of this person. Looks like a girl uh, who's a member of the Long Arm Tribe who's wearing a shirt that has a hundred written on it, but we don't get the name of this person. Um, you know, and then actually, wait, no, this might have been because there was somebody that was introduced in the anime. I remember, and, and it, okay, if it's the same person, I'll throw it up here, but if not, we've never seen this person before with the 100 shirt. Uh, we also have Charlotte Yuen, who is the 35th son, who is like this really large dude wearing a cloak and looks like a bunch of like cracker plated, you know, male, like like cracker's armor sort of thing, Yuen. And then we also get, uh, oh, who am I forgetting here? Um, oh yeah, the 25th son of the family, Snack. Okay, so we move on, it's now in the mirror, oh, what the fuck, oh, really? Really, Oda? Come on, you can't do that. You can't just bust out a snack off to the side. <sighs> okay, okay, so yes. The former Sweet Commander Snack Bounty 600 mil. Now remember, this was the guy that was apparently defeated by a rouge. I and a lot of other people were putting their, you know, bets on Snack being killed. Snack was not killed. Um, he was just defeated, and now he's no longer a sweet commander, and we don't really even get to see him that much in this chapter. We just kind of get to see his silhouette, him arriving there. Maybe he feels like a little bit of redemption, and he just kind of mutters to himself, you know, worst generation, which I can imagine he does that a lot. Maybe his his confrontation with a Rouge was, let's be honest here, he had no hope against a Rouge. No way of taking down the Mad D Monk, am I right? And now that just messed up his head. Now he's just like, worst, worst, worst generation, worst gener, worst generation, worst generation, Bonnie, Beige, Rouge, Luffy, Zoro, worst generation, Law. You know, that's all he does. He just sits at home all day and just mutters words to himself like that. Ah, oh, okay. Also, here's a theory for you. I'm assuming, because Big Mom's family is so big, there's kind of like healthy competition between them, and the, th the three, uh, the, uh, being a sweet commander is like one of the highest prestiges you can have, right? So I'm gonna bet money that how this works is that, you know, you have the sweet commanders. If a sweet commander is defeated, then they just pick another sweet commander. If they're defeated by, maybe there's like a healthy competition between siblings, like I challenge you for position of sweet commander, and if I win, I become the sweet commander. Or, if they get defeated in battle by an enemy, then they immediately stop becoming a, a sweet commander, and then, you know, they'll wait for that position to be filled or something. I, I, I imagine it might be something like that. Um, if we're going along the lines that Paro Sparrow used to be one as well, well, then there might be like a retirement age for them, like, okay, I'm going to pass this on to the next generation, but the fact remains that Snack was defeated by a Rouge, and he's no longer a sweet commander, but he's still alive. Um, 
it might be the same thing for Cracker. Cracker might have, you know, he was defeated by Luffy pretty soundly. We haven't seen him since, so he might not be a sweet commander anymore after this. So right now, it might just be Smoothie and Katakuri, and uh, they might pick out other sweet commanders later. I'm sure there's no shortage of, like, like Daifuku or Oven probably are vying to become a, you know, a sweet commander as well. So there's probably some competition there. But anyway, last scene of the chapter. All right, pay attention to this, children. We cut over to the mirror world. It is 12.05 a.m. and this place is wrecked. Like a big time kegger went down at this freaking place, all right? The entire mirror world is basically crumbling apart. Barely any mirrors that are still solid at this point. And then you have uh, Kata Curry shouting, you know, Straw Hat, is that all you have? And then Luffy's just kind of lying in the rubble like, oh yeah, that's right, okay. And then he begins to get up. Kata Curry's like, all right, good, endure it, stand and fight. And you have this weird moment here where he says, he's like, Luffy's like, you know, I'm going to end this. And then Luffy says, with this, if you, and then he kind of trails off. So he's basically like, I'm going to end this, you know, if you, you know, like kind of like he's implying, like, as long as you fulfill this, then I will end you with this. Kind of the same what he's going with here. Always could be a translation flub. I'm just saying the way I'm interpreting this. And then Katakuri says, yeah, I've already answered you. Okay, so from what I'm gathering here is there was a conversation that went down between these two that we didn't see. They made some sort of agreement or something, because Luffy's like, yeah, I'll finish it off with this technique as long as you agree to what you said earlier. And Katakuri's like, yeah, I've already answered you about that. And then they go on to the final scene of the chapter. Luffy initiates a new form. Gear forth! Snake Man! Oh my goodness gracious, this is going to be all squibbly doodly. All right, so yeah, we got a new... Freaking gear fourth form kids. All right now put on those analyzation goggles Mine just happen to be shaped like hearts, but yours could be whatever put on no I'm not even kidding seriously grab the closest piece of eyewear next to you right now and put them on we're doing some freaking Analyzation time. All right. I don't care if the only pair you have is the sunglasses out in your car go I guess you're going out to your car then pause the video. It's YouTube All right go out and get some freaking glasses and get back here I don't want anyone here. You're not allowed to watch this video anymore if you don't have glasses on I'm sorry if you already wear glasses, then congratulations. You, awesome. You know, nature predisposed you years ago when you were born for this moment right now. Awesome. But for everybody else, go and buy glasses. If you don't have one, I guess you're going to the dollar store. All right? They're cheap. One dollar. Dollar Tree. Get a cheap pair. All right. All right. Does everyone have the freaking goggles or glasses or whatever you have? Any eyewear on right now? I'll even accept a monocle for God's sake. All right. We good? All right, so let's get to this. All right, so the first thing you got to see is when Luffy initiates Gear Forth Snake Man, uh, the same as with a normal Gear Forth, he blows into his muscular system. All right, blows air into that. His eyes begin to change with the hockey around it like the you know normal form does. However, there seems to be a little bit of a ripple pattern when he does it initially. And then in the next panel, you see his eyes taking an appearance that's slightly different from his normal Bound Man appearance. Whenever he goes into Bound Man, the dark rings around Luffy's eyes are more of like ovals, like kind of like a kind of like a bear sort of thing, you know? Um, you know, but these ones are much more pointed at the end. This makes sense because a snake's eyes are more narrow. Now it's not like Luffy's eyes, his pupils themselves become Become similar to snakes and by the way not all snakes have slit pupils um, by the way here's a little interesting fun fact for you if a snake has a slit pupil uh, I think it's more likely it's venomous or if the yeah I, I think that's the case I might be wrong on that actually don't take my advice on that I'm not sure I used to think if it's a slit pupil it's venomous if it's a round pupil it's not but don't take my advice on that but anyway yeah so his uh, the eyes the, the hockey ring around the eyes are more narrow so when Luffy if Luffy were to like close his eyes they would probably look like snake eyes you know that that kind of have to look at now now, something else is that we've seen other forms of Gear Forth up to this point, okay? So we saw Gear Forth Bound Man when he first went into it against Doflamingo. That was kind of weird even back then that he gave it a specific name because up to this point it was Gear Second, Gear Third, and that was it. He didn't give little names to his forms, okay? It's not like he was like Gear Second, you know, Speed Man or Jet Man. No, that's the, that's the name of a Super Sentai series. Um, and it wasn't like Gear Third, Giant Man. No, no, no. Gear Forth Bound Man, okay. And then later on in his fight against uh, uh, Cracker, I was going to say Snack, later on in his fight against Cracker, he used Tank Man full version, and now we have Gear 4 Snake Man. All right, 
So this is how I think this is working, all right? You have Gear 4th Bound Man, which is the base form of Gear 4th. That's the form he usually uses in Gear 4th. Then he has a few specialized versions of Gear 4th. Perhaps when Luffy was training on Ruskina, he felt like just a normal form Gear 4th isn't good enough. I need to have a bunch of situational techniques depending on the kind of enemy I fight against. Now, when he was fighting Cracker, he used Gear 4th Tank Man full version, all right? Now, it's important that he added on the full version. Now, the reason it was called full version is, of course, Luffy stuffed himself full of crackers before he went into it. But I think that's more of just like an impromptu move. I think there's still an original base form of Tank Man we have not seen yet. All right, so the way it goes is here's Bound Man, normal Gear 4th form, like the default. Then we have base form Tank Man, which we have not seen yet. Then we have the full version of Tank Man, which he used against Cracker, and now we have Gear 4 Snake Man, uh, which he's using against uh, Katakuri now. Once again, the whole full version thing, I like to think it was just an impromptu move he just created on the spot when he was fighting Cracker. That doesn't mean every single form of his Gear 4 is going to have separate versions. Like, here's Gear 4 Bound Man, first version, second version, Gear 4 Snake Man, uh, Anaconda version, Viper version. Don't think of it as like that. He has multiple subsets of Gear 4. Uh, um, but uh, the, the Tank Man full version thing, that was just kind of a very situational move when he was full on Crackers fighting against Crackers. So, you know, uh, he has Bound Man, Tank Man, Snake Man, and we might actually see some more. Now I feel like I'm playing Mega Man back in the 90s, you know, it's like, it's like, you're facing off against Snake Man! da 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 Okay. Well, anyway, that, that's what I'm looking at here. Now, as for what this move is going to look like, what this new form is going to take into appearance, um, probably going to be much more agile, much more uh, malleable in terms of rubber. Think of like a snake. How does a snake fight? They, you know, they're very narrow. They can move their body around in weird ways, and they can fit through things, you know? Um, of course, I'm sure there's inspiration here from the Kuja because of Boa Hancock and everything. I'm sure right now, Boa Hancock is back on Amazon Lily like, oh. <sighs> I love you, Luffy. You know, like every time he uses this form, it's just like, okay, it's like, he took this inspiration from me. Um, but I'm imagining, you know, like, remember Luffy's technique, Ally Robo, where he turned his whole body into, like, he, you know, wormed his way around a human to move around like a robo? You know, imagine it like that, except Luffy is much more spread out using this snake form. His entire body is now covered in armament hockey, because that's what Gear 4 does. He has way better control of his muscles. Um... You know, maybe durability goes up because he's compressing all of his, his power down into, like, a more thin form. So maybe his durability is going to increase, and he'll be able to dodge Katakuri's attack way easier now because his body is way thinner, and he could just, like, move like a snake and avoid these attacks and maybe manage to constrain him like a boa constrictor could or something, you know? So, yeah, that's basically what I'm seeing with Snake Man. The, it's probably going to look very goofy, all right? Extremely goofy, I'm imagining. Uh, but that's one piece, of course. People thought that Bound Man's original appearance was really lame but I think we've all gotten to know and love it over the years. Um, but yeah, so that, that's that's the chapter. That's the end. And my God, that was an intense one. We got a lot of stuff, a lot of Charlotte family members in this chapter. Smoothie's giant. She can use Getsuga. Freaking Katakuri has spurs. Uh, and there's apparently some conversation with them going on. I have no idea what that implies. Although, if I'm going to guess, I want to maybe talk about how they discussed how they're going to leave the island. Like, if, if maybe Katakuri came to an arrangement like, hey, if you can knock me on my back, I'll help you get out of this island. I'll, I'll help you and your friends escape. If you can beat me fair and square, I'll help you escape. Maybe that's what Luffy was talking about. It was like, I guess it's finally time I ended this then. You know, as long as you, you know, hold up your end of the bargain. And Katakuri was like, yeah, sure, okay, I'll do that. If you can meet me, I'll do it. I'll help you guys out. So, <laughs> I, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to jinx it. But my whole Katakuri, you know, fanfic and I do. It's it's building. It's building, kids. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. You can take off your thinking goggles now. Um, and uh, leave a comment below. All that good stuff. Uh, make sure to check out... Uh, what else do I have going on right now? Oh, I made a video about Death the Kid over on Viewster. So there's a link below to that if you want to go check that out. I also got the art contest for Green Bowl. Um, that was originally going to be released today. But unfortunately, i got to do this now. I have to go and edit all this. So I have other stuff going on today. So that won't be today. Uh, me and Roger and Joy Boy, we're all reschedule that for next week sometime which will actually work out a lot better for me um so yeah uh this weekend 
you, there might be not that much updates for me because I have a lot of stuff going on. My uh, my mother's actually getting uh, LASIK eye surgery this weekend, uh, which is great for her, but it means that I'm going to have to basically drive her to these, you know, appointments and everything. Like, I think I have, like, three times I have to drive her up to, like, to this, uh, like, a, like, a decent ways away for these appointments and everything. So I, I might, and I have work as well. So this weekend might be a little bit uh, uh, tough for me to get out videos. But, um, yeah, some more good stuff's coming next week. So just uh, hold on to your butts, kids. Next week, Snake Man. We didn't get a break. Remember when Luffy first went gear fourth against Doflamingo? Break next week? No break. Snake Man. This time next week. Later, guys. Snake Man. So, hype. Fuck. Just do form. You get the snack. Snack. Snacks bounty is too low. Snack. <laughs> All right.